people believing that the trend historically will repeat itself as we go into the having and you know by the end of next year we'll see some Hello everyone. In this conversation, Fred Thiel, the CDO of Marathon Digital Holdings, which holds the title of being the biggest Bitcoin miner in the United States, shares insights on the revitalized positivity surrounding Bitcoin. He delves into the potential impact of the Bitcoin spot ETF offered by BlackRock and also sheds light on the alterations in accounting standards that could encourage a greater number of companies to include Bitcoin in their balance sheets. So if you're ready to navigate the exciting world of crypto, Bitcoin, and stocks, hit that subscribe button now. Join us on this exhilarating adventure towards financial growth and success. Don't miss out. Subscribe, like, and share today. This latest bull market is considered to have begun on October 13, 2022, a day after the S&P 500 closed at its most recent low of 3,577.03. Why has the market RALIED? Largely because the economy has defied predictions by not falling into a recession, at least not yet. Markets tumbled last year on fears about how the worst inflation in decades would ravage the economy. More precisely, Wall Street got spooked by the aggressive measures the Federal Reserve took to combat high inflation. The Fed has yanked interest rates to their highest levels since 2007, up from virtually zero early last year. The aim was to drive down inflation by slowing the economy and dragging down prices for stocks, bonds, and other investments. That left many investors bracing for a recession for months, but a remarkably resilient job market has kept the economy afloat. Inflation, meanwhile, has eased off since hitting a peak last summer. That has Wall Street hoping for the Fed to soon stop hiking interest rates. Both the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Nasdaq are already in bull markets, having entered them in November and May, respectively. I'd said uh, a few years ago that uh, this industry, uh, the regulators would always favor the incumbents. And I think um, you could, on the one hand, if you're a conspiracy theorist, you could say, well, the SEC has been clearing the decks so that the incumbents could come in. Uh, on the other hand, you could also say it just takes a long time for the incumbents to get their ducks in a row and make sure everything's in alignment. Uh, BlackRock is approaching this in a an interesting way, they've been accumulating Bitcoin for the past six to nine months um, in purchases in the market. Uh, they've structured this uh, slightly as a hybrid in that uh, unlike prior ETF uh, applications from Valkyrie, ARK and others, um, this is structured in a way that provides the SEC with a market surveillance. And you know the SEC's counter argument to these ETFs has been risk of market manipulation, etc., um, it's interesting to see that, you know, BlackRock obviously chose Coinbase. They're a large investor in Coinbase, I believe. Um, so they're obviously going to favor one of their portfolio companies. But, you know, the timing was interesting. It seemed a little bit coincidental, maybe, that, um, you know, while all the pressure is on these U.S.-based exchanges who are now kind of moving offshore, all of a sudden BlackRock comes in with an institutional-grade product of 355 ETF applications that they've made historically, I believe the number is 354 have been approved. So they obviously wouldn't do this unless they had a belief that uh, they were going to succeed. And, uh, you know, NASDAQ has a custody application in with NYDFS that should be decided on in July here. And uh, there's been some noise about NASDAQ potentially as a next step looking to do some form of trading of Bitcoin and ETF, uh, Bitcoin and Ether. Uh, on their exchanges. So I, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. But it obviously, likely, you know, existing incumbent institutions that are trusted by the regulators will play a bigger and bigger part in this industry. And it'll be interesting to see what's kind of left for Coinbase uh, and the others uh, as the regulators require them to kind of break up their businesses into separating custody, custody and trading, etc. Or the SEC needs to... Uh, let's just say, improve the perception in the marketplace that they're not just uh, trying to kill crypto, but that they're actually enabling. You, know, you look at this Prometheus uh, exchange that magically made it through the SEC's process and was approved uh, and was highlighted as a poster child at recent hearings in Congress uh, for the SEC. 
be able to prove that, yes, you can get approved if you just follow the right channels and do the right things. Uh, you know, I think uh, BlackRock's fund, as I said earlier, has been investing in Bitcoin. I think they believe Bitcoin is going to make a run. You know, wouldn't it be convenient that you have a large accumulation of Bitcoin that you can drop into an ETF instrument all of a sudden and monetize uh, quite nicely and generate a nice gain on it? You know, Fidelity has had their custody product, obviously, and offers trading. Charles Schwab and others have you know launched this um, EDX exchange, uh, which is regulator friendly. They don't do custody. It's for institutions only to do trading. It's kind of like a hybrid between um, an OTC desk and an exchange. Um, so I, I think you know all these people talk. Um, BlackRock obviously has a lot of uh, sovereign wealth investors. Sovereign wealth funds are investing heavily in this. You know, our, our partners in UAE are one of the largest sovereign wealth funds in the world. They're obviously very focused on digital assets. UAE as a country is very focused on it. Bhutan is now f- investing in it. Uh, you know, it's uh, there's more hash rate growing in non non public companies than in the public companies. So if you look at the global hash rate growth of all the public companies, and you look at global hash rate in general, global hash rate is growing faster than the public companies are adding hash rate, which is new. And so that says that there are a lot of people who either are coming into this industry who are new to it, uh, or there's a lot of money all of a sudden coming in that's funding people to grow their capacity. Well, if you look at the step ups in Bitcoin's price this year, they've been event driven, right? The step up from 21 to 28 most recently um, before it pulled back to 25 was driven by the banking crisis. Uh, You know, before that, um, you know, we saw the expectation that interest rates would potentially drop driving. So I think what we're seeing is, you know, there's not a lot of liquidity in Bitcoin. Most of Bitcoin is held off exchanges. It's held in uh, cold storage. Uh, the vast majority of wallets haven't moved in a long time. And so it doesn't take a lot of interest to move the price of Bitcoin a whole lot right now. And I think what we're starting to see is not just in Bitcoin itself, but, you know, look at the shares in Bitcoin exposed stock. You know, look at what's happened most recently in uh, like companies like ourselves. You know, we have 160 million plus shares outstanding and we traded over 80 million shares a day, two days this past week. You know, and, you know, on strong uptick in price. So that says that there's a lot of interest all of a sudden coming into this space. Uh, and they want exposure across the sector. All the mining companies are way up. And it's not just because the price of Bitcoin is up. It's because people believe we're now going into a new bull bull run, I believe. Um, but, you know, again, I'm not going to prognosticate where this is going. Um, you know, I have my theories. But I, I think, you know, we're, we're going to see people believing that the trend historically will repeat itself as we go into the halving. And, you know, by the end of next year, we'll see some strong price appreciation if it follows historical patterns. Well, we can take history as a guide. Were there any um, specific news or events that you could attribute the last bull run to? I'm talking about the one in 2020, 2021. Um, There were a lot of things and not dissimilar to now. It was a lot of that run was around the belief that institutional adoption was happening. And so uh, there were, you know, a lot of ETFs were being filed. You had a lot of belief that you would have some form of positive regulatory environment, but a lot of it was just around institutional adoptions being to happen. Um, and you saw a lot of, um, you know, Druckenmiller was talking positively about Bitcoin. You had a lot of these traditional uh, financial kind of titans talking about uh, digital assets as an interesting area. And uh, I think you know, you're seeing a little bit of a repeat of that now. But like many things, uh, you have, um, you know, a hype, an initial hype cycle when everybody goes, wow. And then you have a crash typically after that. And then you have the realistic uh, return to optimism driven by people actually doing things and evidential um, information that shows that, you know, adoption is actually happening. Wallet it, wallet volumes and uh, balances continue to increase uh, in Bitcoin. That speaks to broad adoption. Uh, Lightning is um, slowly but surely being adopted in more and more places. You're seeing layer two applications uh, in the Bitcoin space becoming more and more relevant. So, you know, I think we're going to continue to see adoption. And what 
excites us, obviously, um, as a Bitcoin miner, uh, is the fact that Bitcoin's dominance, market dominance, is now almost at fifty percent. It touched fifty percent the other day, and you know, at the detriment of uh, altcoins and um, to a lesser extent Ether. I think what we're going to see, though, it's again continued lightning adoption, more layer twos. Uh, that'll come here over the next six months. We're certainly very focused on looking at what are the enabling technologies that we could bring to bear to help the ecosystem develop. And we think it's a very interesting space. Um, we also think that um, there are potential opportunities as AI becomes a more relevant uh, technology. Um, you think about how the AI industry is developing. And now I'm talking about companies using these large learning models, these LLMs to develop inference models for their businesses, they're not going to want to share their data with public LLMs so other people get the benefit of their data. They're going to want to keep their data proprietary. So you're going to start seeing an interesting um, confluence of AI and blockchain technologies. And again, I think um, with these AI tools, you know, people are going to want to make sure that something hasn't been modified by AI. So for example, you could have a... Um, a government report on our frozen orange juice futures, let's say, that comes out. Um, you would want that report to be stored in a way so you could prove that it had not been manipulated or in any way changed by some tool, just like photographs, images, movies, videos. You know, AI today lets you manipulate things in such creative ways. People want to be able to protect their copyrights. They want to protect the authenticity of things. They're going to want to protect the provenance uh, of things, whether it's wine trading, art trading, whatever valuable asset trading. So I think there's going to be this need to have a very secure place that you can go to to validate that something really is what it is. And that is going to be the Bitcoin blockchain at layer two or layer three. And you're going to see, I think, very many applications for things that have nothing to do with financial transaction settlement being built on top of the Bitcoin blockchain that act as um ways to secure the validity of data so that in a world where AI can do pretty much anything, you can prove that something is real and hasn't been adulterated. By subscribing to our channel, you'll gain exclusive access to a wealth of knowledge and valuable content that can supercharge your financial journey. Hit that like button to show your support and let us know you appreciate the quality information we provide. And don't forget to share our videos with your friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. Together, we can empower one another and create a vibrant community of like-minded individuals.